AP Calculus AB, Unit 8, Day 10, Office Hours, for the pretest. So this is some good practice for your upcoming test. Um, we do have some integration rules that we've, uh, you know, that now we're doing. We're undoing derivatives. So this is the power rule. You bump it up one, increase it by one, and then divide by the new exponent, minus 6x plus c. You always need to do plus c. Uh, and then we could simplify it to x to the fourth, minus 6x plus c. Don't forget the plus c. And it should show up right in your work, right when you do find the antiderivative. This one right here, instead of trying to do some fancy technique, you substitution like or whatever, probably want to rethink of it as x to the negative one half and then distribute it. This is probably going to be the easiest strategy. The so rules of exponents, you add them. And then it's a, it's a power rule. So it's going to be uh, x to the 3 halves divided by the new exponent multiplied by the reciprocal. That's 8. x to the 1 half divided by the new exponent multiplied by the reciprocal plus c. And if you clean up, it's going to be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 16 x to the 1 half plus c. <clears throat> Uh, next one, <clears throat> you can, you know, uh, integrate each of these terms separately. This one, I'm probably going to go ahead and use u substitution for it. And I would pick u equals cosine x. So then du equals negative sine x dx. And I guess we do want the negative. But don't apply this to these other terms. These guys... You can integrate them on their own. The answer to e of the x is e of the x. So this is going to be plus 2 natural log the absolute value of x. Not power rule. Even, you know, some of you might want to think of it like this first, but then that's not going to really get you anywhere. You get x is 0 divided by 0, which should clearly be wrong. And then here, we got plus du over u squared. So i got to continue to integrate this one. So that's going to be uh, u to the negative 2 du. So that's going to be u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. So it's going to be e to the x plus 2 natural log the absolute value of x minus 1 over u, which was cosine x. And then, of course, don't forget the plus c. So you can you know use u substitution for just certain terms. <clears throat> um, I guess we could, by the way, write this. There is one other way we could write this. Uh, I'm fine with this, but we could also say one over cosine is secant. It's a little nicer. In fact, we probably could have avoided u substitution uh, originally because you could have thought of it as um, one over cosine times sine over cosine. I don't think this is easier, but and then that's uh, secant tan. And the antiderivative of secant tan is secant. So that would work also. You got options. Okay, here, yeah, I've given you the second derivative and a tangent line to the function at x equals 3. So we know when you have a curve and you have a tangent line, they share a point and they share a slope. So we're going to try and use that to help us I'm going to get initial conditions from this. So to find the first derivative, we have to integrate the second derivative. <clears throat> and that's going to give us 2x squared over 2 plus c. Now, they both share the slope. So we know that f prime at 3 is going to have the same slope as this line at 3 which is just negative three. You can take the derivative, or you can just think of it as y equals mx plus b is the slope. So we're gonna plug uh, three in. 
and it should give us negative 3, which means that c is going to equal, that's going to be 9, negative 12. So our first derivative is now x squared minus 12. So we're halfway there. So now we need to undo it one more time to find the original function. So we're going to integrate f prime, which is going to be the same thing as parentheses x squared minus 12 dx. I need the parentheses, I need the dx. And that's going to give you x cubed over 3 minus 12x plus c. Now, <clears throat> the point on this line, if you plug in, uh, if you plug in f of, if you plug 3 in to the line, and you get its xy pair, which is 1. So 3, 1 is point where the tangent line is tangent to the curve. That point's also so that's, uh, that's the same thing as f of 3 equals 1. That's the initial condition. So we're going to plug 3 in here. And it should come out to 1. So this is going to be 9 minus 36. And that's going to be uh, negative 27. <clears throat> so we get c equals 28. And so your final answer is f of x equals one third x cubed or x cubed over three minus 12x plus 28. That's your final answer. So you use the tangent line to get your initial conditions. All right, true false. You gotta show you gotta give me some evidence to back up your true false. If all you do is write true or false, I'm not giving you any credit. This one, we could say, um, what about that rule? Okay, look, you can't match them up if the top's the same, bottom's the same, but if you flip one of these, um, then you would also have to change the sign, right? And this doesn't work when it's a, when it subtracts. So I don't think this is gonna work, but um, I guess the way, you know, the way we could approve it is we could find the, uh, I mean, we could, Yeah, let's see. I mean, this is, okay. So we could do the antiderivative. And get f of a minus f of a. Now we should get zero on the left. Those cancel. Get zero equals two f b minus two f a. So that's that's false. All right. Um, next one. Next one looks like these guys match, right? And it's addition, so we should be able to link it up and say that it is a to b at f of x. I think I'd be fine with that amount of work claim that it's true. Otherwise, you could kind of do what we were just doing. We do the whole antiderivative. But this is a bit more work. I think I think I'd be comfortable with you showing me this. Circle the matching ones, rewrite it. Yeah, that's true. And that shows that the left side and the right sides are the same also. Okay, number seven um, isn't true or false. It's uh, They've given you this and given you this and they want you to write this. Now the thing I would say is, okay, well the top matches the bottom. So if we add these together, it should give us uh, two to four. So two to four is gonna be negative eight plus three is negative five. So that's what this one is. Now be careful, sometimes this guy might have the limits flipped upside down. So then you'd have to change the sign or something. 
Um, number eight, uh, I've given you this, and then we want to integrate this. So we can break this up. Might be good to show that in your work. But you have to integrate the two. You don't just put plus two. If you put plus two, that's a big mistake. So this is going to be eight plus. Now the integral of this, you could do 2x is the antiderivative. And plug limits in. 2 times 6 minus 2 times 2. 12 minus 4 is 8. And your final answer is 16. But you could also be like, hey, let's just do this geometrically. Let's just graph this. This is a flat line that goes through 2. And we want the area under it from 2 to 6. So it's the area of a rectangle. So it's just base 4 times height is 2 is 8 that way. So you could do this, or you could do this to get the 8. All right, answer 16. Uh, number 9, got another. Now, I don't think you substitutions can help you here. This doesn't seem to fit any of those special, you know, inverse trig things. So one thing to consider, and we kind of use this idea back on number 2, is to just distribute multiplication or division. Um, I mean, you could... You could actually treat this, I mean, there's two ways to do this. You could say, okay, well, this is x to the 1 half minus 3 minus x cubed times x to the negative 1, and then distribute this rules of exponents. Or you could just use rules of exponents right now and say, okay, well, <clears throat> now it's going to be x to the 1 half minus x to the first, that's x to the negative 1 half plus 3 over x. You could say x to the negative 1 if you want minus x squared. So you could do you could do that, but three over x is actually the way you want to think of it. That's gonna be natural log. So we're gonna power rule for the first term. And then natural log the second term. And power rule for the third term plus c of course. So your final answer. Um oh but then there we're not gonna do the plus c because this is a definite integral. So we're going to plug these these uh, limits in. So it's going to be 2 square root of 4 plus 3 natural log of 4 minus 64 over 3 minus, you're going to plug 1 in, 2 square root of 1 plus 3 natural log of absolute value of 1 minus 1 third. And natural log of 1 is 0. That's going to be 1. This is going to be 4 plus 3 natural log of Four, get rid of the absolute values because it's positive. Minus 64 thirds minus 2 plus 1 third. <clears throat> so we're going to get 4 minus 2 is 2. 60, negative 64 thirds plus 1 third is minus 63 thirds, which is. 21, so this is going to be negative 19 plus 3 natural log of 4 for a final simplified answer. So there you go. Got a lot more integration on the other side. And that's going to be... big part of this test. So we could do use substitution. I am I think I'm okay with, you know, if you feel comfortable, as long as you get it right, if you get it wrong, and it involves chain rule, that's going to be a big mistake. <clears throat> I would say, oh, um, this is going to be cosine 2x, uh, we need negative, and we need 1 half because the extra 2 is going to pop out, which that we don't want. So, I mean, I'd be like, hey, that's the answer. But use substitution, it is a chain rule. And that's what u substitution is for. But I just think in some of these cases, it's not as big bad. So we need a 1 half in front. That's going to be sine u, du, and then you're going to get negative 1 half, cosine u, plus c. And then you got to change it back to terms of x. So if you do use u substitution, make sure you don't leave u's in your answers. Okay, number 11. Um, I... You know, I think we could go either way. I think you could do u equals sine 2x. And I'd go for that. I mean, you could do u equals 2x, but then it is going to be an extra level of u substitution you need to do. du equals 
uh, 2 cosine 2x two dx. Uh, don't want the 2. So we're going to get 1 half uh, u du. So then that's going to be 1 half u squared over 2 plus c. So that's going to be final answer 1 fourth sine squared 2x plus c. Now, alternatively, you could say that u equals cosine 2x <clears throat> and du equals negative 2 sine 2x dx. And I don't want the negative 2. So this one, you get negative 1 half u du. And you get negative 1 half u squared over 2 plus c. And you get negative 1 fourth, but u this time is cosine. So these answers are equivalent. So either one would be okay here, depending on which, which approach you want to take. Okay, uh, next one. I think u substitution would be worth it here. I don't think I want to really foil that out. I'll use Pascal's triangle. This is going to be a lot quicker. u equals what's inside a bit above it is your du. I don't want the 2. I do want the x and the dx, right? So this is going to be 1 half u cubed du. So it's going to be 1 half u to the fourth over 4 plus c. And that's going to be 1 eighth x squared plus 4 to the fourth. Rewrite it back in terms of original variable. Don't forget the plus c. <coughs> Okay, next one, I think this should probably be our u. Usually what's in the denominator a lot of times works well or inside of a square root or whatever. So that's u, du equals two cosine two x dx. I don't want the two. So we're gonna get one half du over the square root of u, which I'm gonna rewrite as one half u to the negative one half du which is going to be 1 half u to the positive 1 half divided by the new exponent multiplied by the reciprocal plus c. So that's going to be the final answer, square root of sine 2x plus c. All right. Number 14, uh, cotangent is not cosecant squared or whatever. But I want to rewrite it as cosine over sine is u substitution u equals sine x denominator is your best choice most of the time so this is going to be du over u which is going to be natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and then we rewrite it back in the original variables natural log of the absolute value of sine x plus c now if what's inside the absolute values is always positive, always negative, then we want to get rid of the absolute values. Probably still need sometimes grouping symbols, but sine is positive and negative, so we have to leave that. Okay, this one here might go ahead and just at least try the whole denominator. Sometimes we can't, but this one is going to be 2e to the 2x. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times an extra 2 because of the chain rule. Don't want the 2. And this works out. I got e to the 2x dx. Perfect. So this is going to be 1 half du over u. So this is going to be 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. This is going to be 1 half natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus e to the 2x. Now, 1 plus e to the 2x, no matter if you plug a negative, positive, 0 in, is always going to be positive. So our final answer. We're just going to have parentheses, and you need that. Okay, if you don't rewrite it without absolute values, it's like leaving your answer, you know, it's like leaving your answer like this. Like, oh, it's absolute value 5. Well, why, don't, why don't you just want to write 5? Okay, it's simpler. Okay, um, now, there are other versions of this answer. If you want, you could bring this inside as a power and be a square root. I mean, I don't care, but 
So that's an impossible answer. Okay, next one. If we go with the denominator, u equals x to the 6 plus 1, and we do du equals 6x to the 5th dx, that doesn't work. We need x squared dx, so that's not going to work. So then we get more creative. We say, well, oh, maybe this is inverse tangent, right? Where it's like something squared here. What would you square to get x to the 6? x to the 3rd, and make that your u. And then that works. I mean, you should see it coming. Oh, yeah, it's going to give us an x squared dx. Perfect. And I want the 3. Easy fix. So this is going to be 1 third du over u squared plus 1, which is inverse tangent of u plus c. And then final answer, we write it back in terms of the original variable, x cubed plus c. <clears throat> um, next one, I think this should be our u, u equals sine 2x. So du equals 2 cosine 2x dx, and we don't want the 2. So this is going to be 1 half e to the u du. So that's going to be 1 half e to the u plus c. So that's going to be 1 half e to the sine 2x plus c. Number 18, I'm thinking either the denominator or what's inside the cosine. Either way, it's the same thing. It's the square root of x, which you then want to think of as x to the 1 half, because then du is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx, which is the same thing as 1 half times 1 over the square root of x dx, which is perfect. So it's actually, this is our u, and this is our du. Now, I don't want the 1 half, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So this is going to be 2 cosine of u du. So this is going to be 2 sine u plus c. So this is going to be 2 sine square root of x plus c. Next one, we could try the whole denominator as our u, which often works and is easy. But you can check it on paper or in your head and realize this is not going to work. You need x dx, not x cubed dx. So probably got to do that. Probably got to do inverse tangent. Now, if we're going to do inverse tangent, there's something else we need first. This has to be a 1. Take care of that right away. If you realize that's your strategy. So we're going to factor uh, a 4 out of everything in the bottom. And so that leaves a one there, but then you got to factor it out of out of this also. That's where you're gonna your u is gonna be. So what would you plug in to get x to the fourth over four? It'd be x squared over two. That's gonna be your u. X squared over two. Du equals x dx. Perfect. So this is now going to be one fourth du over 1 plus u squared, so 1 fourth inverse tangent of u plus c. So final answer, and we leave these superscript negative ones. Those are not exponents. That means inverse in this case. Put back in the original variables. Don't forget the plus c. That's your answer. All right, let's do some more. <clears throat> okay, um, now you might be thinking, oh, this is inverse sine. Well, just try what's inside the denominator first. And it works out nice. It's not inverse sine. We need e to the 2x dx. Divide by negative 2, so we're going to get <clears throat> we're going to get uh, negative 1 half du over the square root of u, which is negative 1 half u to the negative 1 half du, which is negative 1 half. Power will bump it up 1, divide by the new exponent, multiply by the reciprocal, plus c. You should show up in your work right there. 
which is now going to be negative square root of 1 plus e to the 2x. We write it back in terms of the original variable. All right, 21. We could try the whole denominator. We've seen a bunch of inverse tangents, but we will entertain that maybe it's something even simpler than that first, which it is this time. If you go complicated right away, it's hard to realize that you need to go simpler later. So just try simple first. This is going to be 1 half d over u. So this is going to be 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. It's going to be 1 half natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus e to the 2x plus c. So we don't need these um, absolute value symbols anymore because that's always positive. Okay. All right, 22. Uh, what's inside? du equals negative 1 dx. Now, this is a problem here because you still have an x left over, which is usually bad. That means you picked the wrong u, but here, there's really no other choices for u. So, there is one other strategy that works sometimes. We could solve for x in terms of u. It would be u, uh, x equals 4 minus u and plug that in there. So now I got a negative from here. And then I got a 4 minus u in parentheses. And then I got a square root of u du. Now the way I'm going to do this, I mean, you could try this on a lot of problems even when you pick the wrong u, but then you get something else that you can't do still. But I think we could pull this off. Uh, think of this as an exponent, distribute it, use rules of exponents. We can get 4 u to the 1 half minus u to the 3 halves. It's going to be negative. Now, this negative has to be distributed to everything. So it's going to be negative 4 u to the 3 halves divided by the new exponent plus u to the 5 halves divided by the new exponent plus c. So the final answer is going to be negative 8 thirds. I use the original variables, 4 minus x, parentheses, so 3 halves, plus 2 fifths, parentheses, 4 minus x to the 5 halves, plus c. Okay. <clears throat> Next one. Mm, if you pick the whole denominator of u, which is a lot, a lot of times a good choice, uh, I don't think this will work. You have to do product rule. I mean, it's a mess. It'd be x times this plus this times that dx. I mean, is that going to work? No. So maybe just something that's part of the denominator, like the natural log, because the derivative of that the derivative of what you pick for u should be the rest of the stuff that you see. Perfect. So this is going to be d over u, natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, natural log of the absolute value of the natural log of x plus c. Now we don't need absolute values inside of this guy because that was just already there. Can we get rid of these absolute values? Nope. Natural log is both positive and negative. So we've got to keep them. 24, I distribute this. Um, you're going to get um, 1 over x plus x secant x squared. Uh, this, I can just integrate that on its own. But this, I think we might want to use u substitution for x squared d equals 2x dx. Divide by two. Now, just all this stuff only affects this guy. Keep this guy on its own. Break it up, integrate on its own. So this is going to be a one half uh, secant squared u du, which is that. That's a derivative of tangent. And then this guy's already x, so we're just leaving that the way it is. But this guy has to be rewritten back in terms of x. OK, um, here we have a second derivative with initial conditions. So uh, we've got to work backwards to find the original function and find the c values along the way. So to find f prime, you need to integrate 
the derivative of it, which is cosine two X. This is all really good work I would show, which is sine two X, but an extra two is gonna pop out. So we need a one half. You could do use substitution for that. You know, get that extra one half that way too, plus C. I'm okay with not doing it. Now our initial condition is when you plug in zero, you get two for the derivative. So C equals two. So F prime of X is one half sine two X plus two. So we're halfway there. So we gotta do it again, f of x equals the integral of f prime of x. Uh, so we have one half, um, then we're gonna get cosine two x, which means another two is gonna pop out that we gotta fix. And there also needs to be a negative, plus two x plus c. Our initial condition Plug zero in, it's gonna be negative one fourth cosine of zero plus two times zero plus C should come out to one. This is one, so C is gonna equal one and one fourth, five fourths. So your final answer, F of X is negative one fourth cosine two X plus two X plus five fourths. All right. Now let's do some motion stuff. Rectilinear motion, one dimensional motion. So, I mean, this is kind of like the problem we just did, where you have a second derivative and you're going to get the first derivative, less work out. So velocity is going to be the integral of the derivative of velocity, which is going to be the integral of acceleration, which is going to be the integral of sine 4t dt. This is all good stuff to write down. Now you could do u substitution. You're like, all right, u equals 4t, du equals 4 dt. I don't want the 4, so I got to divide by 4. And you get, you know, then you get one fourth sine, uh, one fourth integral of sine u du, and then you get negative one fourth cosine of u plus c, and then you get negative one fourth cosine of four t plus c. Now, I personally would just jump straight from here to here. I'd be like, oh, it's going to be cosine four t, need negative. It's going to spit an extra four out, which I don't want. So I need one fourth there to cancel out the chain rule stuff that I don't want. But you could do use a substitution also. Now let's use the initial condition. That's going to be one. So C is going to equal two and, a four, two and one fourth, so nine fourths. So your final answer for VT is going to be negative one fourth cosine of. 4t plus 9 fourths. All right. <clears throat> Here's another one. Acceleration, initial velocity, initial position. So I'd probably try and find all these equations first and then start answering questions. This is, this is a lot of tedious work and it's, I think it's easier, more, it's uh, more efficient to just do them all first. So velocity is going to be the integral of v prime, which is going to be the integral of at dt, which is going to be the integral of parentheses 12t minus 30 dt, which is going to be 12t squared over 2 minus 30t plus c. We have an initial condition for velocity, so we plug that in. And we should get negative 12 out. So this is going to be 24 minus 60. 
it's going to be negative 36. And so it's going to be 24. So velocity is 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. We're halfway there to getting the position, which I'm just trying to get anyways. So s is going to be the integral of s prime, which is going to be the integral of velocity, which is going to be the integral of 6t squared minus 30t plus 24 dt, which is going to be 6t cubed over 3 minus 30t squared over 2 plus 24t plus c. Paper here. Okay. <clears throat> um, so then we can use initial condition, plug 0 in. And it should come out to 1. These all go away, C equals 1. So your final answer for S of T is 2T cubed minus 15T squared plus 24T plus 1. Okay. Now, Johnny's minimum velocity. Minimum velocity. We have endpoints here, that's easy. We need critical points. Now, some people are going to think, oh, let's set the velocity equals zero and define. No, that would be critical points for S. We're looking for critical points of V, so we need V prime, which, by the way, also equals acceleration, which is 12t minus 30, and we need to set that equals zero and define. This is all work you need to show. You need to label it. You need to set equals zero and define. And you guys should work. So t equals 5 halves is your critical point. So then we're going to make a table. Always make a table. Okay. So we're going to plug that into velocity. That's the thing we're trying to minimize, optimize, maximize here. So velocity equals 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. And we're going to plug in in point 0 and critical point is 5 halves and 10. Plug zero in here, you get 24. If you plug five halves in, it's kind of messy, but uh, you're gonna get 25 fourths. Let me square it, minus 30 times five halves is 24. So this is gonna give you um, 3 halves. And I'm probably going to just keep all these as halves because I've got a bunch of halves here and halves here, and I might actually make this half. So we have 75 halves minus 150 halves plus 48 halves. So that's going to be negative 75. Um, 27, negative 27 halves. Plug 10 in, you can get 600 minus 300 plus 24, so it's going to be 324. This is the max. This is the min. We're looking for the min. So we're going to say, we're going to write our answer nice. We're going to say minimum velocity is negative 27 halves, or 13 and a half, at time t equals 5 halves. You got to show the table, you got to show the work. Okay. Intervals when Johnny slows down. So that means a acceleration velocity and then you have opposite signs. So the easiest way to find this and support your work is with line checks. So um, we already found when acceleration equals zero, so we could use that for this. We need velocity equals zero, so velocity was um, 6t squared minus 30t plus 24, and we set it equal to zero, undefined. 
And so factoring six out, to make things a lot nicer. This is going to be t minus one, t minus four. Now remember, we're not going to do negative time in our final answers, but it should still be in your work if, if it shows up. So velocity, line check, has a one and a four. Test of value, t equals five. Um, plug it in here, it's all positive, negative, positive. Acceleration, right below it, five halves is what, two and a half? So that should be right here. Test the value, t equals three. If you plug it in here, it's gonna be positive, negative. So slowing down is gonna be when they have opposite signs, those chunks. Now, you could do negative infinity to one. We would include the one because it's the end of velocity but not acceleration. And then we could do five halves which would definitely be a parenthesis to four, which would be a bracket. But we don't want negative time. So we're going to say zero to one and five halves to four. And put the bracket on zero because it's in the middle of the answer and we, and we do include it. So this is when it's slowing down. Speeding up would be when they're both negative or both positive. So this would be speeding up and this would be speeding up. So, use, when is Johnny resting? Well, that'd be when the velocity equals zero, which we just found right above. What was that one and four? All right, uh, here's a graph of position versus time. And it says, Johnny's walk, given Johnny's walk, find when Johnny is resting. Well, that'd be when the velocity equals zero, which is when s prime equals zero. So I would say at time a, d, and g. Right? Horizontal tangents. Maybe not g. It's an endpoint. <clears throat> when is Johnny moving forward? Well, that's positive velocity. Okay? So that's when the slope is positive. So that's going to be uh, 0 to a, and we usually include endpoints for you know increasing, decreasing, and then d to g when Johnny speeds up. So that means that acceleration velocity have the same sign so um, here, velocity is positive, velocity is negative, velocity is positive. Acceleration is going to be associated with concavity. So from here to here, acceleration is negative. It's concave down. Here to here, acceleration is positive, And here to here, acceleration is negative. So when do they have the same sign? Well, positive, negative, no, negative, negative, this whole thing chunk right here. So I'm going to say <clears throat> from A to B. <clears throat> I'm not, I, I'm going to include A because it's an endpoint of positive of velocity, but not acceleration. I'm not going to include B because it's the endpoint of acceleration. So then we have negative velocity, positive acceleration, then we have positive acceleration, positive velocity. So I'm going to say D to F. D to F. We're not going to include we're going to include D. We're not going to include F. So that should be it. Answering the same questions, but from a picture instead. So I think I'm going to make a separate video for problems 29 and on, just because this video is getting kind of long. So I will make a separate video for these.